Okay, everybody. So, uh, as I said, the first, we're going to uh, divide the class into two parts. The first 20 or 25 minutes or so, we're going to review the main topics that we have been talking about so far. And then the next uh, part of the class, we're going to have the team presentations. So, as I said, we have seven teams. So, hopefully, we'll have, you know, in the next uh, nine or 10 minutes, we'll have enough time to cover both the review and the presentations. So what I want to review first is, so far we have been talking about all those aspects, marketing management, and then uh, after a few classes of marketing, we talked about financial accounting, and then we turned on to operations management, supply chain design and integration, finance, human resources management. Uh, we talked for one class about leadership. As I said, all these classes are the classes that you're going to take next few years. So my classes were just an input, so leadership is also one of the classes that you'll talk in detail next year. Uh, and the last one was uh, strategic management, so we have talked uh, a few hours on strategic management, and we will continue our discussion uh, on, on that, so next, next class on Monday. So uh, let's, let's go through them real fast and try to make sure that all of us remember the concepts. First of all, when we talked about marketing, we said uh, we, we talked about this definition of marketing. As I said, there are multiple definitions of marketing, but one of the most <laughs> inclusive definitions is probably this one. Marketing is the art and science of getting a target market, uh, keeping them, growing them, by communicating superior value. Create, deliver, and communicate. And I explained that in the example of our local uh, cell phone operator, as I saw. <coughs> and who can, who can tell me how they uh, define their target market? How would you like to? Yes, they uh, define their target market as all people of Azerbaijan, users of cell phones, and uh, they get them and they keep them as they give um, as, uh, some um, advantage to them uh, or some, for example, making some company. Some campaigns? Yeah, okay. campaigns for them. And growing, uh, they do the best of uh, their work as uh, competitors do. Mm -hmm. And they want, or they want to get um, uh, subscribers of the competitors. Mm -hmm. And um, they create new things and they deliver their um, service to customers. Okay. And uh, they communicating, for example, um, in operations, okay. uh, they communicate with their uh, subscribers. For okay. example, one subscriber calling and they must answer to them uh, very good uh, for the ne for the second time to call them in the um, when they have a problem. Okay, that's very good. So, so that's how other cell creates value is by being superior to other cell phone operators here, right? Like for example, Baxel or any other operator, mm -hmm. just by delivering a little bit more convenient service, a higher quality, they have a longer uh, range of coverage. So that's how they uh, create and then they communicate, as Hayal said, by, by different advertisements, commercials. So wherever uh, their target market can see those uh, advertisements, know about them. And that's, that's how I said would be a, a good example of managing marketing in an example of a local company like other sell. So we talked about these concepts in marketing. We said that there are multiple def uh, concepts in marketing, production concept, product concept, selling, marketing concept. Now we talked a lot about those I'm not going to review. You all remember this. We have been tested. We have had the quiz, and all of you scored very well. So I don't see any point to review them. But I just want to, uh, the main uh, concept in marketing, as I said, was a holistic marketing concept. And I said, in holistic, there are two, uh, two parts in ho holistic market. Relationship marketing, that's what we talked about. When businesses try to establish a relationship with their suppliers and their customers, right? <coughs> and integrated marketing was, uh, and when we talked about integrated marketing, we talked about the four P's and four C's. P's from the produ producers, providers uh, perspective, and C from the customer perspective, right? Uh, in all of your business plans which you're going to present today, I'm sure you have paid attention to those. So, for example, whenever you're defining your product, you make sure that your product solves some of the customer solution. For example, there is an unmet demand in the market, and then that's how you meet that demand, how you satisfy that demand. Or there is a demand that's being met, but your product, your uh, service, is meeting that demand better than your competitors. 
That's why you have made that business plan and you hope that the business plan is gonna, uh, is gonna generate some, um, some uh, good future, both for the company and for the customers. As I said, with price, your price would uh, mean cost to the customer. So anytime you set a price, you keep, that, you keep in mind that the customer is, ha is paying that your, uh, the, the price you set is coming out of the pocket to the customer, right? And place, and last time I, I gave some comments on, uh, on team, team five, I gave to your uh, team, Ugar. Yeah. I said that when you set up a, a place, not only do you consider your own needs, but you also have to keep in mind the convenience, right? I know uh, Ibrahim last time mentioned uh, Caspian Pizza, right? In your business, you're making sure that your place is at, at the most convenient location to the potential, potential target market, right? And, and uh, your business also, right? Mm -hmm. Numbers? So again, promotion is just what Hayala explained, is uh, advertising. So for example, in your business, uh, Yusuf, in your, uh, in your business, in your business plan, how do you plan to promote your service? Um, promotion, we advertise first of all, mm -hmm. uh, we have advertising strategy. Okay. We're gonna post uh, in internet, in TVs, and journals, okay. magazines, mm -hmm. newspapers. Okay. And also we will, uh, <coughs> For, for us, we think the best thing is our company to get really well known, okay. so that the company will sell itself. Okay. And uh, because we will be like really ranked, a uh, good, highly ranked uh, company, mm -hmm. customers like will need us. Like, this okay. is our goal. That's very good. So when you choose a, a, a communication channel, you want to again keep the target market in mind. You want to make sure that it's, it's in a place where your target market can see and can learn. For example, if your target market is uh, for example, in one of the, for example, in Turkan's business, uh, it's uh, a private dormitory for students. In that business, your target market is who, Turkan? Uh, my target market is uh, students uh, from, coming from regions. Okay, students coming from regions and studying in, this, in the capital city, in Baku, right? So that's your target market. So when you advertise, you're not going to advertise in the regions, but you're going to advertise it here in Baku, probably, right? Because that's where your target market is, right? So, and, and when you choose the channels also, you keep that in mind. So I think uh, that's enough for, uh, for, for P's and for C's. Uh, that, and then we talked about customer value. Now, from the marketing manager's perspective, this is probably uh, the most important thing. Again, each manager, for example, operations manager cares about quality and cost, and marketing manager cares about how to deliver the value, as we saw from the definition, to the customer better than their uh, competitors, right? So that's why uh, total customer value and total customer cost is, is a very essential concept. These are very essential concepts. T total customer value is, as you can see from the definition, it's a perceived monetary and psychological and functional benefits from a product. Now, when we, when we talked about that in marketing, I gave you multiple examples. Like if you buy, for example, Ibrahim, if, if you buy a laptop, what could be some of the functional benefits from it? Okay. Uh, so maybe brand will be a psychological brand for okay. him. For example, if uh, Ibrahim buys Apple or Ibrahim buys HP, I think, uh, for example, right now in Azerbaijan, uh, Apple is more, much more fancy than HP, mm -hmm. and uh, Ibrahim will get directly psychological benefit from okay. that. That's good. So a brand would give you some psychological, uh, how to say, good, good feeling, right? I own a good, uh, a good brand. Exactly. So that's very good. And a total customer cost would be, as I said. Uh, most people think, most even manufacturers, most customers think a cost would be only when they buy the product. Actually, from marketing perspective, cost would be much more than that. We said that uh, whenever a customer is evaluating a product, so going to different stores and evaluating products, and whenever they buy it and then when they use it, so all the costs associated with that would be part of customer cost, right? In Ayub's business, for example, Ayub wants to eliminate in his business plan, he wants to eliminate. Uh, or he wants to not eliminate, but he wants to reduce the total customer cost by eliminate, eliminating the need by the customers to go physically to those stores by his online business. Um, Anil, can you give us an example of what would be uh, an example? What kind of costs could there be after you buy a product? So let's say to get that laptop, you paid 500 months. What other costs could, could there be after you buy it? Uh, that 
That's right. Uh, even in funding programs, mm -hmm. that, uh, they won't uh, be on capital and buy. Okay. They can't uh, buy all three. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to design your account with it? That's right. So, in other words, all the antivirus programs you get, all the software that you get that specifically meets your needs, those would be the cost of using that product, using that laptop. That's very good. Or if there's also maintenance issues, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you, like as we read in the example of HP uh, Oracle, let's say you as a customer crack the window, uh, crack the screen in your uh, laptop. Now there is a need for maintenance. <coughs> now that's also a cost. Now we have seen that from the article about HP uh, way of dealing with customers, that was extremely huge cost for that particular customer. Frustration uh, and also the you know poor customer service by uh, by those uh, you know service providers made that cost to be extremely high. So again, it's not the only the first uh, the, the money what, uh, what they paid it the first time as they purchased the laptop, but it's also what comes after they purchase. So based on these two definitions, we talked about customer perceived value, which was the difference between a product's cost and its value <coughs> versus what the alternative product offers, right? And I gave an example in the verses of two local cell phone operators, Adosel and Maxell, how uh, as consumers, most of you, for example, uh, assess or evaluate your perceived customer value depending on the cost and the, and the uh, total value that you get uh, from that service. Uh, and then I gave you this example, I hope you haven't forgotten. There's a 20 to 80 rule, all of you remember, that's right, which says top 20% of the customers generate 80% of the profits. And there's another rule, 20 to 80 to 30 rule, which says, again, the same thing, top 20% of the customers generate 80% of the company's profits, half of which is spent serving or half of which is lost, serving the bottom 30% of the customers, <coughs> right? Now, uh, Edwin, can you explain to what, what this would be in an example? Uh, yes, uh, for example, if, you buy, if someone buys a computer and he uh, develops a guarantee and he can uh, give this computer back, okay. and uh, he, he works with this computer mm -hmm. for a time, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's compu the computer has a depreciation cost, okay. and uh, then uh, he finishes his work. For example, he can give this computer back, and mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's on top. So. That, that's an ex excellent example. That's very similar to what I said in class, right? I gave you some very funny examples of how customers make use of that uh, of that strategy. At that time, all of you laughed as consumers. But tomorrow, when you're managing businesses like that, <coughs> and when you have to deal with such such costs then you won't be laughing, that's my opinion. I think you would be a little bit more sad when the customers are taking advantage of that policy and these, uh, you know, these 30% bottom, um, obviously not, I don't want to say bottom, but 30% unprofitable customers are taking away half of your profit. That, that's a sad fact for business people. And I, I put that very controversial question. Most of you disagreed with me at that time. I hope right now we're on the same page. Sometimes you may have to think as managers, should we get rid of unprofitable customers? And in today's business practice, Orhan, what do we do? Uh, I think uh, I uh, ignore uh, this uh, unprofitable customers. So you don't necessarily ignore, but you find some ways, yeah. systems, to in order to get rid of them, right? You set up policies in place uh, which kind of puts an obstacle in front of those uh, third percent unprofitable customers to make it hard for them to come to your business. And there are ways which you can do ethically and you know, respectfully to those customers. You don't stand in front of the door and chase them, or you don't, uh, when they call you, you're not gonna hang up the phone thinking he's, an, uh, he's in the bottom third percent. But you have some <laughs> systems in place, right? So, uh, and again, you keep ethics and, and you know, morality in mind when, when you make such decisions. And I gave you this example of, if you remember, uh, how you can decide whether you want to invest in a customer or not. Uh, there is a uh, custom and average uh, sales visit, uh, which I said in an example would be about 300 monarchs, and number of sales would be number of sales visits would be four times. So to, to get a new customer would cost you about 1,200 monarchs. But and then you also estimate the customer's lifetime value. So in one year after you get the customer, you get about 500 monarchs revenue from that particular customer, 
And if that customer stays loyal for 20 years, it means that, and if your co company's profit margin is 10%, it means that the lifetime value for the customer would be 1,000 AZN. So if it costs you 1,200, and if you're getting 1,000, what would you do with that customer? Five. What? Ignore That's good. What, what is it regard? Ignore or fire. Not ignore, but you want to fire, right? Yeah. So you, you don't want to invest in, in business terms. You don't want to invest in that customer. Uh, and then we talked about uh, uh, accounting. Since we have talked about this very recently, I'm, going, I'm not going to talk too much about this. Uh, we said that in accounting, there are two types of users of accounting information, uh, internal and external. And as you can see, internal would be the managers of the business and other employees. External would be owners, creditors, and tax authorities. Uh, we, we use those uh, accounting information to make uh, accounting decisions, uh, adding and dropping a product, product pricing, production scheduling, cash management, cost control, <coughs> uh, and evaluation compensation. Um, and these are the four types of financial uh, information that we talk, talked about. Balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, and statement of owner's equity. <coughs> now you are, in parallel to this class, you are taking your starting at uh, beginning uh, accounting class, so I'm not going to talk about this. I'm sure you all know. And I think at this point I'm going to stop because the rest of my uh, review would be based on some things we have recently, just, just a few weeks ago, have covered, which would be supply chain design and integration. We all know uh, just-in-time inventory management programs, right? Uh, we all know uh, quality, total quality management. Uh, Six Sigma, we talked about it. I think it's all fresh in mind. So my point, the reason why I reviewed these were when you're submitting your uh, plans, business uh, plans, I hope you have included those, and when you make presentations uh, today, I hope you keep those things in mind. With that, I'm going to start uh, letting you uh, do the presentations, uh, and I think we're going to, as I said, we have seven teams. Please keep, uh, keep time limits in mind. So with that, I'm going to start the team one, okay. next presentation.